total atomic annihilation, the rebuilding of this great nation of ours may fall to you. That's why we at vault -Tec have prepared these educational materials for you to better understand the seven defining attributes that make you special. And now, charisma. What is it made of? Unlike the clean, wholesome America you may recall, the wasteland will be a distrustful place, full of unsavory characters and few morals. Earning the trust of your fellow man is an often overlooked key to survival. One way to prove your trustworthiness is through fair commercial exchange. Your renowned charisma will enable more favorable bartering. Don't get greedy now. Use your charismatic nature to negotiate your way out of tense moments. Having friends is always of value. How else do I find friends, you may wonder. You may find an impromptu cocktail hour helps to ease social stress. Your charisma will help you avoid the perils of addiction, but not the immediate effects of drink. So practice moderation, or you'll find out who your real friends are the hard way. You will find that even wild animals can be charmed by your charisma. Looks like you've found a new pal. Oh, don't get carried away there, big fella. So you see, taking the charismatic approach is more than just good manners. Working with man's best friend into more loyal companions will convincing others to act on your behalf and regularly study your vault tech provided materials to prepare for survival. And to answer the question, do you know what makes you special? Prescriptions filled, high quality chems right here. If you're hungry, you can grab a quick bite of power noodles. Just talk to the robot. New issue of public occurrences, view from the ball, outsider's perspective on the Commonwealth.
Hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. Insurance? That's right. Insurance. Personal protection, like. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accidents. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said let him go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. No. Why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. You all right, brother? You killed him. Got a good pair of eyes on you. I think you'll fit in here. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Good neighbor? That what you call this place? That's right. We cobbled this little neighborhood together out of the freaks and misfits that just wouldn't be accepted anywhere else. You'll see. You make enough friends here, you'll call this place home soon enough. So long as you remember who's in charge. Mayor Hancock? Too bad about Finn. Gonna miss him next Super Mutant attack rolls around. Oh well. What can I do for our newcomer? What's your story, Hancock? My favorite subject. I came into this town about a decade ago. Had a smooth set of skin back then. While I was busy making myself a pillar of this community, I would go on these, like, wild tears. I was young. Any chems I could find, the more exotic, the better. Finally found this experimental radiation drug. Only one of its kind left, and only one hit. Oh man, the high was so worth it. Yeah, I'm living with the side effects, but hey, was not to love about immortality. You're immortal? Well, not exactly. Ghouls just age really, really slow. Something about the rads, maybe? Now, who knows? You're a hell of a risk taker, Hancock. Only have one life. Why not try it all? Anyway, did you need something else? I'll get back to you. Stop by any time. Free for the taking. Whoever this Brotherhood of Steel is, I'm not buying that we come in peace malarkey. Oh, new face walks into my store. And you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle a friendly face, I say. So you need some supplies? What's it like, you know, being a ghoul? Well, it's a lot worse when people always ask you about it all the time. But I guess I can't blame them. On the upside, I look pretty good. For being over 220 years old. Now, were you buying anything? Wait. You're 220 years old? Okay, okay. It's more like 270 years. But don't go blabbing that to everyone. Being a ghoul means you live a long time. You stop counting birthdays. Do you know what it's like being that old? Actually, I do. <laughs> well, now you're just making fun of me. If you were as old as I was, you would have been around since before the war. So let's hear it. Come on. Tell me what the world was like before the war, if you're so ancient. I had a beautiful house, white picket fence, and a lawn with the greenest grass you'd ever seen. It was... peaceful. It was, wasn't it? Sorry. Last thing you want to see is an old lady tearing up. 
Well, you're either the most well-preserved ghoul I've ever seen, or you're the second best bullshitter and good neighbor. Ah! So, what do you remember about the past? Oh, sweetie. I was an angry young woman back then. Thought the world was sick and wouldn't give me my due. Then it all ended, and well, I ended in a way, becoming a ghoul. Maybe when you get to be my age, everything starts to look like fate. Anyway, I like your story better, whether or not it's true. It's the truth. All of it. You know, if you haven't already, you should check out the Hotel Rexford. There's another pre-war ghoul hanging around there. Well, we should get back to business. What are you picking up? What kind of things do you sell? Oh, a bit of everything. Canned beans to cans. I try to take every weird bit of junk the caravans are willing to trade. So chances are you'll find something to your liking here. Ready to take a look? Let's see what you have. Remember, no returns, exchanges, or death threats. Hey. What can I do? Hey. Hmm? Hey, Piper. You look like you could use a pick-me-up. Your thoughts? Need a countdown on the Institute's favorite people? We should get going. All right. Are you going to hang out in the lobby all day again, or are you actually going to go down and do some work? Being available to the customers is work. It's not all about cooking chems, Claire. It's not all about sampling those chems either. Maybe if you stopped using, you could focus. What? Where's the fun in cooking it if you ain't using it? My mistake. Oh man, someone new! You need some jet, man? Homebrewed? Reasonable prices? Not now. Hey, no worries. Next time, huh? Before you even start, let's skip to the point. We have rooms. One room specifically. Payment due up front. All right. Here's your money. The room is on the top floor. When you come to the hallway, it's the last one on the right. I just clean up around here.
What? No, it can't. It, 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 it's you from Sanctuary Hills, right? Wait, are you from vault -Tec? I am vault -Tec. 20 years of loyal service, and now look at me. I wasn't on the list for you. Look at you. 200 years, and you're still perfect. How? How's that possible? You don't know? They didn't tell you? Tell me what? What is it? How did you get through these last 200 years untouched? The vault had these pods that froze us in place. I only thawed out recently. What? vault never told me that. Unbelievable. Well, I had to get to the future the hard way. Living through the filth, the decay, and the bloodshed. Look at me. I'm a ghoul. A freak. Are there any other ghouls out there from before? You mean crazy Kent and nothing bothers me, Daisy? Yeah, there's a couple of us, but no one from the neighborhood. No one from vault -Tec. They just left me there. I'm so sorry. I didn't know this would happen. You know, you're the only other person I met from before. I, uh, I... Oh, God. I've been so alone here. No Commonwealth settlement wants a ghoul with 200 years of vault tech sales experience. Hey, you know, you could head back to Sanctuary. I'll come visit. I promise. Really? You... you will? Okay. I'll head over there right now. You... promise you'll come visit. Right? I'll see you there. This place ain't what it used to be, and it ain't used to be much. you can make it. How's my favorite girl doing? Didn't I see you on a date with Morowski the other day? Huh. He wishes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We're getting off track. What was I saying? Oh, that's right. What matters? Excuse me. We freaks God, gotta stick together. Here. And the best way to stick together is to keep an eye out for what drives us apart. You feel me? Yeah, you tell it like it is, Hancock! Now, what out there in our big, friendly commonwealth would want to drive us apart? What kind of twisted, unneighborly boogeyman would want to hurt our peaceful community? The Institute and their sins! That's right. Who said that? 
Come on up to my office later. You've earned yourself some jet. The Institute. They're the real enemy. Not the Raiders. Not the super mutants. Not even those tools over in Diamond City. I don't know, Hancock! I'd sure love to give McDonough a kick in the ass! <laughs> hey, we all know I got my own personal beef with that lardhead. But stay focused. Now, I want everyone to keep the Institute in mind. When someone starts acting funny. When people are doing things they don't normally do. When family starts pushing you away for no reason. We all know who's behind that kind of shit. And the only way to stop it is to stick together. They can't control us if we're not afraid. Now, who's scared of the Institute? Not us! And which town in the oh, Commonwealth yeah. should the Institute oh, yeah. not fuck with? Good neighbor! Good neighbor. And who's in charge of good neighbor? Hey. Hey. Ah. Of the people! Oh, for the people! Oh, the people. Brotherhood of Steel, better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. Well, well, Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about the loaning. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Excuse me. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. You're the one who can extract memories from a brain, right? Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? We need a deep dig, Amari, but it's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? How much of the brain do you need exactly? That is not an encouraging question. I suppose I'll have to make do with whatever you can find. Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. 
But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption, and we don't have the password. Let's see. A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Hey. You say the word. Piper. Shoot. Your thoughts? Have any more questions about the Institute's enemies, Blue? We should get going. All right. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Remember, you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Turn down the goddamn radio! I'm trying to sleep! Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but... I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. <sighs> I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, 
I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Mm, what a joke. What's it mean, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. Teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days. Like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop sending you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. We'll let you down. You've always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. The thing about happiness is, is, you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. You focus on the petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand. That's what happiness felt like. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You've gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. I was the hot shit. The gunslinger from the hub. Rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez. And I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well. For a while. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around, looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got it. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I... I never deserved her. Not for one second.
Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Mind if we? I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. Sit down. Suit yourself. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek away. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured... They were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. And I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement. Which suited me just fine. First synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, 
I could see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We are running out of brain here. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so... This one stood out. They didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Vault computers are still working. The eggheads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me, and I made sure they knew it. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. This is the one. Here. Open it. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh, I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of, uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh, still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come no, here, baby. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you Sean! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out... They won't be able to hide from him for long. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, ah, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Is 
This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Good news, I think. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or...? Just elimination. Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. Six eighty-eight, ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Okay. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Am I okay? Are you seeing anything bad? Don't be alarmed, but I honestly don't know what to look for. As I said before, this is uncharted territory, but your neural and physiological readings have returned to normal. From a medical standpoint, you're fine. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? I saw Kellogg's life. The man who ruined my family. 
The man I killed. That's right. He was a human being just like the rest of us. And he had reasons for being what he was, however cruel. How does that make you feel? Does it really matter how I feel, Doctor? Yes. You can't tell me that bearing witness to that man's life didn't affect you. We're getting off track. The important thing is that we discovered the Institute's greatest secret, teleportation. The only question is, what do we do now? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil, we need to find him. You're right. A rogue Institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield, or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radax, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Heads up. Shoot. Heads up. Look alive. Look alive. the way. Hey, Piper. Hmm, time for some travel fuel. Want one? Your thoughts? You know, you are some kind of dedicated. I wouldn't want to share a beer with Kellogg, let alone a brain. Your thoughts? Let me know if there's anything I can do to lighten the load. Or, you know, if you need anything proofread. I just wanted to check in. Make sure things were all right between us. Well, I gotta say, I like the way you've been handling yourself out here. Commonwealth's not an easy place to do the right thing. But somehow you manage. Your thoughts? If there's a story here, we'll find it. Oh, nothing. Okay. The memory den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. Irma. Oh, enjoying yourself and good neighbor? It's a heck of a town, ain't it? Nick. Hope you got 
got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Kellogg? Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Or I could head back to Diamond City, since you've got company already. We have to head into the Glowing Sea. Any advice? Hmm. I'm a synth, so radiation isn't much of an issue for me, but an old suit of power armor might just be the guardian angel you're looking for. That or you could buy up all the rad X and rad away you can find from any chem dealer who's got it in stock. I'll see you around, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Sounds like Ellie needs to talk to us. We should head back to the office next chance we get.